Uh, it's like the old days, this, isn't it? Except that you can't deny what's in front of you now. You, you can't deny that when Boris Johnson, after signing his so-called deal, told you that there would be no uh, tariff-free barriers to trade, uh, he was wrong. That's the most generous possible analysis. I think he was lying. I, I, in fact, give me a moment. I'll be with Sarah and then Paul imminently. But briefly, I think they're different creatures, Rhys Morgan and Johnson, even though they're, they're cut in some ways from similar cloth. They went to the same school, for example, although they had very different experiences there. Um, I think that Rhys Mogg is a master of self-delusion. I can almost muster up some sympathy when I imagine the effort that he must have put in to convincing himself that he was wise or, or, or intelligent. Uh, I mean, there's an awful lot of help in arriving at that conclusion if you're born with silver spoons in every orifice. Um, but the idea in his own mind that the reason why perhaps his school days were so difficult was because he was of a superior uh, breed to many of the people around him. And I think that actually uh, uh, protects you from some of the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. But unfortunately, he brought it into public life. So that might be his uh, personal protective mechanism but he brought it into public life and he honestly thought he understood these things better than the director general of the World Trade Organization or actual import agents or anybody really. Uh, I, I always remember Kieran who always described himself as a van driver, but he understood. He, 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 he could have lectured you for, for days on end about what was going to happen. Um, and yet many people denied it. And now it is happening. So I think Rhys Mogg is a curious mixture of, of delusion and ignorance. I, I think he's got a very mediocre intellect, but an incredibly well-developed engine of delusion. And so in the same way that he convinces himself he's a superior breed, so he convinces himself that Britain will somehow thrive and flourish by removing itself from associations with, with, with foreign countries. So I don't think he ever stopped to work out whether what he was saying was true or not, because it was like an article of faith. We, in fact, let's remind ourselves of some of the things that he that he said. Um, let, let's start, of course, with with I mean, possibly the stupidest thing he's ever said in public. Although it's a it's a very crowded field. I would be in favour of a deal, but if that proves impossible, there is nothing to be fearful about uh, uh, leaving on WTA terms. Okay, and all the people that say there's a lot to be fearful of, like the National Farmers Union and the Governor of the Bank of England and the CBI, you, you can see what they can't see, which is... Well, the CBI's got everything wrong in its history. It wanted to join the euro, wanted to join the exchange see, rate again, mechanism. That's, I think that's what you just call the red herring or something, isn't it? So the question uh, is, no, what can you see no, that they can't see? Uh, what I would say is that you should judge people by their previous track record. Well, the I am. The, Why the, haven't you taken down that tweet from The Sun about the, what the, tariffs really means? Because the, the Sun withdrew it and the, it's still on your Twitter the, account, the, so I'm judging you by your track all record. Right. Uh, ju judge away. The governor of the Bank of England said we'd have Judged. a technical resection. Thank you so much. Fortunately, you're not a part of the judiciary. Uh, the governor of the Bank of England said we would have a technical recession purely on a vote to yes, leave. The that question is, what can you wrong. see that they can't see? And like, you know that the governor, I mean, this is so disingenuous. The governor of the Bank of England dedicated himself on the morning after the vote to making his own predictions not come true. But the, you the, know this. You just the, know that if you say it no, in a no, no, plausible no. and persuasive fashion, people will continue to believe you, despite the fact that you've led them to the precipice of a no-deal Brexit, well, which uh, even you know, deep down, will be disastrous. Uh, Unless you can you, answer this question. You, what is it you can see that they can't? You're, you're trying to get up to the uh, adverts with an hysterical diatribe. I think it's all right, we can postpone the adverts. What can you see that all of the people who warn against coming uh, out with no deal can't see? I can see what they've got wrong before and why... I'm not asking about the past, I'm asking about the future. What can the, you the see that they a, can't see? The past is a very useful guide to the future because you can see why people are making the judgments. The CBI protects incumbent interests and therefore it always goes uh, for things that are not for the consumer interest but the producer interest. Yes, okay. The Governor of the Bank of England is a deeply politicised figure who has been anti-Brexit from the moment it was uh, proposed. What can I see? I can see the opportunities of cheaper food, clothing and footwear, helping most of all the but incomes of the least well off in our absolutely society. Absolutely nobody because agrees with you. we can cut you. tariffs, we can absolutely reduce costs nobody to people, agrees with we can you. be even more the competitive, sun, more even open, the sun newspaper withdrew these claims. It's incredible listening back to that. I think I, I think I owe you an apology. I think I tried too hard to be equable. I should have torn his head off. 
I, I think I was still entertaining the possibility that I didn't understand stuff and he did. What a pathetic mistake that was, seriously. And check this out, when you don't have to endure my voice on this one. In terms of improving people's standards of living, as, as you mentioned there, when you look at almost every major independent economic body and their predictions, when you listen, and listen to the governor of the Bank of England, when you listen to people running major international companies, their view, and it's, it's a prediction rather than fact, but their view is that it will decrease. A no-deal Brexit would decrease living standards, that employment would go down, the pound would go down even further. We'd have inflation, which would make it harder for people living on the breadline to buy food. The prediction is it would be a significant shock to the economy. It, they can't, we can't just dismiss what all of those bodies and all of those people say, can we? Well, dismiss is perhaps a harsh word, but we can look at the fact that they've been completely wrong since 2016 and they've made all these absurd forecasts the over and over again. The crashing, though. The, 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 the Governor of the Bank of England said there would be a technical recession merely on a vote to leave the European Union. That was wrong. We didn't have one. The economy has grown. Um, currently, there are economic headwinds, but these aren't to do with Brexit. These are to do uh, with a slowdown in continental Europe and a slowdown in um, China, which have an important effect on us. But the way we can improve people's standard of living is once we take charge of our own tariffs, we can reduce tariffs on food, clothing and footwear, uh, and that improves people's standard of living very directly and helps the least well-off in society at the most. It's a really exciting opportunity. Extraordinary. And, and listen, you know I'm cursed with this need to see the best in people. Maybe not him, but you, you know, if, if you were one of the people sending abuse to me after that interview, I, I think you can still see people on YouTube, not that interview, but the one that I did, still see people on YouTube going, ha, 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 O'Brien got owned. It wasn't a battle. It wasn't a game of football. It was, it was, a, it was, a, it was, it was a battle between truth and lies. And, and he lied to you. Or he was too stupid to understand what he was talking about. And another very good example of that, of course, um, in the news today, and finally, it looks as if the Northern Ireland Assembly is returning to work, Northern Ireland effectively, without any devolved government at all for, for months and months and months as a direct consequence of a Brexit that Jacob Rees-Mogg said would have no impact whatsoever on Northern Ireland. And understanding it was really simple. You needed to understand that the Good Friday Agreement hinges upon there being no substantive difference on either side of where the border used to be. Life had to be the same. Trade had to be the same. Rules had to be the same. You needed to have regulatory alignment. But again, because the actual words regulatory alignment didn't appear in the Good Friday Agreement, like a sort of a, 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 a very mediocre sixth former in a debating society, he thought that was a powerful point. And yet here we are today celebrating news almost eight years after Brexit, celebrating news that they, they may have come to an arrangement that allows the island of Ireland to accommodate the insanity of Brexit. So here, here he is on the Good Friday Agreement. Talking um, about the withdrawal agreement, yes. uh, it is a Remainers Brexit. What does that mean? It means that it's shadowing membership of the European Union. It's half in, half out. Uh, that it would tie us in to the common external tariff. It would tie uh, us in via Northern Ireland to... Uh, the EU's rule book in vast swathes of activity. And when people warned that the Good Friday Agreement would render that inevitable, why do you think they were dismissed? Because it doesn't. Um, the <laughs> so regulatory alignment isn't in the Good Friday Agreement? No, it isn't. OK. It is. No, it isn't. It's not a matter of the, it's not a matter of the Good Friday Agreement. The Good Friday Agreement wasn't considering those sorts of issues. You don't think the Good Friday Agreement insists on regulatory alignment on both sides of the Irish border? No, it doesn't. I, 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 what do you do now? What do you do? Uh, literally, in, in, in Thomas's news bulletin, we're, we're, we're reporting upon a resolution of the problem he just denied existed. Eight years. Eight years after Brexit, and God knows how many years since that interview. Five years, I think, almost to the day since that interview. Go on YouTube, have a look at all the people who still bought his snake oil, still buying it last month. And, and yet now, it, I mean, it is literally like arguing that the world is going to end on Tuesday and, and it's now Wednesday. So what do you do with your loyalty to the person who told you that the world was going to end yesterday? It is actually Tuesday. I should have chosen my words a little better there. It's like arguing that the world was going to end yesterday and it's now today and he's there. He's still getting, you know, paid by one of these weird new television stations. I can't remember which one. I think it's the Rupert Murdoch one, is it? Or is it the other one? I, I, anyway, it doesn't matter, does it? Because they exist to keep these lies alive. 
And, and, and I was motivated throughout by a deep belief that you deserved the truth. 